Christchurch Spatial Plan. Sarah and Mark. And Tracy. And Tracy. And John. <laughs> and not Mark. There he is. Uh, so, sorry, it's been a change of presenter, so it's uh, Richard Osborne, Tracy Turney, and myself. I thought um, so. We're just <laughs> gathering <laughs> Richard. It's just popped out of the room. Just go and find him. He's there hiding he out now. the back. There he is. Ta da. Which door? Apologies. <laughs> You're right. Okay, I'll just briefly introduce uh, uh, Richard and Tracy. So, Tracy Turney from the Greater Christchurch Partnership and Richard Osborne from Waka Katahi. So um, as you're aware, this is a, a joint effort between the Greater, Greater Christchurch Council and our central government partners as well. Um, so we're here for um, both item seven, uh, the Greater Christchurch Spatial Plan, and item eight, the Mass Rapid Transit. Uh, we'll cover them both because they're an integrated program as part of the Greater Christ uh, Christchurch Partnership. Um, you're being endorse, uh, asked to endorse the Greater Christchurch Spatial Plan for, for a formal consultation and hearing process, as well as uh, item eight, the Mass Rapid Transit um, indicative business case, and further work on the detailed business case. Um, we're going to take the reports as read because there's been briefings, and, and several councillors and the mayor are on the Greater Christchurch Partnership. Um, so we're, we're happy to um, take questions now before considering the recommendations. Thank you, thank you very much. That's good. Yes, we've, we've, been, we've been briefed to the moon and back on this one. So, so question. Tim and then Pauline. Thank you. Is, um, it's um, interagency included. Are Kiwi Rail involved in this as well? Just asking. Key Rail do not sit on the Greater Christchurch Partnership or the Whakafanaka Kainga Committee. However, we have met with... You've just switched him off. <laughs> I've just switched you off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. I saying something wrong? <laughs> yeah. um, however, we have met with them and discussed, them, discussed this with them. Okay, thank you. Okay. Pauline? Yes, thanks. Um, nice to see you, Richard, and Tracy, and John. Um, the... To me, it's, it's you could call it a chicken and an egg with the transport and the spatial planning, but I I think, and I like your comment on this, shouldn't the transport plan be the number one and everything else fit into that? The MRT should come we, first. We can both answer that question. Okay, go. Uh, I think it's an integrated package mm, of right the, um, they both do go together and um, they're very important to complement each other. You know, for example, the housing intensification and the transport as well. So I'll let Richard add to that. I'd just say the same thing. Well, I know, but then uh, well, we'll, we'll, look, we'll look at PC14. I mean, we've got carte blanche intensification is what, what they're wanting, whereas surely we want it just along the MRT for a start. Uh, certainly the decision on um, for consultation, uh, public notification for PC14, was trying to target that intensification more along those uh, transport corridors and centres, which is in alignment. But, but why should we be trying to do that when it should be a no-brainer? I'm a puzzled about this. Well, week. we were given um, direction from the government. We've done the best we can with that direction. I think um, the councillors here and uh, staff have made some good progress with that direction. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just a little bit mystified that, you know, where's the teeth in it all, that sort of thing. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> okay, who was isn't even on the list? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he didn't see me. I was just going to say, isn't it true that MRT um, globally is a, is a huge inducement to densify um, around, around its corridor, essentially? Um, very much so. Look, this we, we often refer to the MRT project as a as a city shaping project rather than a transport project, and um, it only works if you get growth and intensification along the route and around the stations, and um, because that will one support the huge investment that's required to get this off the ground, but that will also result in increasing patronage for those people who live adjacent to the route. So you're right. Um, 
there's many ways you can encourage growth in particular areas. You have regulatory controls such as MDRS, but then you have lead infrastructure as well. And this is an example of lead infrastructure whereby with a, um, I guess, a permissive regulatory, regulatory regime as well as this, um, what you're likely to see in years ahead, if indeed this is built, would be significant growth um, along that route and around the stations predominantly as well. Just, just to add what, to what Richard was saying is um, some of the implementation work that's coming out of the spatial plan will be looking at um, not just the regulatory mechanisms but the non-regulatory mechanisms to encourage growth to support MRT as well. So, um, yeah, it's not just regulatory, there's non-regulatory uh, mechanisms as well that we can look at. Okay, Tyler? Kia ora. Uh, that was a. Uh, it's it's really exciting to see all of this, and it's also um, it makes me nervous too, um, for the future. Uh, I've just got a couple of questions around the T's and C's, and I've got questions around the hearings panel. Who usually historically who have sat on those kinds of hearings panels in the past? I'm getting an issue with my on button. Uh, thank you. Um, so in terms of the hearings panel, so it's a local government uh, hearings panel, so it's not an RMA type. So it's similar to the hearings that are run for um, annual plan and long-term plan. Um, so there's not anything that dictates the makeup, um, but that was considered by the Whakapanako Committee in terms of how do you get a good representation of the community and of the partners um, and also um, with that independent chair, just somebody who can hold the process and provide that guidance and support. Sure. And in the past, have there been um, young people sitting on those hearings panels? Uh, this is the first spatial plan that's been yep. developed, so can't speak for past um, okay. other local government processes. Would it um, be beneficial for young people to be on said hearings panel? So that was considered by the senior officials group in terms of that had been raised in terms of that youth voice because it had been so um, successful in part, part of the hui hui mai getting that voice heard. Yeah. The consideration was one of the risks around that is for that it's quite a lot to put on a young person's shoulders and who would that young person be representing? So would they be wearing many hats? So we considered how could we get, we had such meaningful input into engagement, what's a better way of getting meaningful engagement in the hearings process to actually influence decision making? And so we are, as part of the recommendations of Whaka Whanake, was included a specific one around tailoring support for youth to engage in the submission process. So we're actually working with that connection group already who are really excited about how can we actually provide support to keep that voice going through. Um, so we felt that was probably um, a, a, a greater way of getting that influence into the decision-making panel rather than um, appointing someone specifically. Okay. But ultimately that was the decision of the Whakapanake Committee. Okay. Going, going back to the things that are talked about in the, in the hearings, is there usually question time for, for those panellists to ask questions to those submitters? Uh, that'll be up to the panel to decide how they'd like to run it, but it'd be very usual, uh, similar to the way you run your annual plans, where mm. people get a time to speak and then panel gets a time to ask questions. Okay. that's. I, th I guess that's where I'm trying to get at a little bit, is it's really valuable for a youth voice to ask those questions that relate to them. Um, that's. It's, it's really um, important that they're at every single level of this. I know there's other people that need representation, um, but in regards to this, looking at it into the future, it's going to be affecting our young people the most. Um, so what I was actually hoping um, is for staff to provide advice on the addition of, a youth, re of youth representation on the GCP spatial hearings panel. Uh, I would love um, actually some advice on that. Dawn, I don't know where that sort of slots in. Yeah, you, we, can, we can look at that. Um, that's, that's, it's, it's the only reason why I just want to just chuck that in. Um, knowing that it's going to be affecting them the most out of anybody in this room. Okay. Um, so we've got Yanni, Aaron, Mark, Sarah. Yeah, I just, um, <clears throat> this won't be an um, unfamiliar question, but I'm still trying to understand what we're going to do different as part of this spatial plan compared to the urban development strategy, which had some really good um, actions around things like affordable housing um, and environmental protections around things like um, neighbourhood amenity and you know so it supported intensification and more density but it did so on the basis of um, 
a number of environmental and, and social um, actions, which largely don't seem to have occurred. What are we doing to address the social and the environmental impacts of just rezoning more land and allowing more land to be converted into more housing so that things like housing affordability um, and environmental amenity get addressed? So um, as part of the spatial plan, there, there are priority areas that are um, identified and there's um, actions in terms of implementation coming out of that. Those types of issues will be considered through that further work and um, councillors and, uh, will be involved in, in some of that work as well as we, we look to implement some of these actions and they will address those social and environmental type um, concerns that you're, you're raising. So is this on page um, 69 where it just, you know, it's got a number of priority areas, joint housing action plan, but there's no, there's no, I mean, the timing just says ongoing, ongoing, to be determined, short term. It doesn't allocate any resources to achieving it. It doesn't give any key milestones. Is that, is that the kind of, is that all we've got to go on? So in terms of that strategic level, so it's going through that process, sitting at a high level, going, what do we want to achieve, what does success look like? Then it will come down to the Whaka Whanake and GCP to develop that work program. So um, there's already work going underway to say, well, we've, you know, without um, presupposing how the final plan would get adopted, but saying that the directions are, as you point out, not dissimilar, can we start thinking about those action plans and exactly that? How are we going to do this? Who's going to do it? And what's the resourcing requirements? Because all the partners are then going to want to consider how they can contribute and what they can do with that. So, so when, when, sorry, just to be clear, when are we going to get that information? So, in terms of implementation of the spatial plan? Yeah. So, it'll go through to adoption. So, there's a process for that to go through and be heard before it becomes the strategy. Um, and then, of course, we sit and say we want to confirm the implementation plan. I guess what I'm saying is that we're not necessarily waiting because, as you point out, the the work around um, uh, social and affordable housing has already been part of that work program, but it's saying how do we progress that more effectively now and and what can we do around that with the um, partners' input and resources that we have available. It's been like repeatedly delayed. Like we've, you know, we've repeatedly been waiting for that work. It was supposed to go into the last round of LTPs and district plan reviews that the councils have done and it didn't happen. That's so, affordable housing you're talking yeah, about, that yeah. component. So, you know, can we get, I mean, I just, how can the community make submissions to this process if they don't see the resources are required and the milestones that we're trying to achieve? I guess that's the concern. Like, how do we, how does the community give feedback on what our priorities are if they can't see the cost of delivering and the time frame of delivery? I think that's a, that's a really valid point. I think that discussion comes forward in terms of the partner organisations when they consider um, the levers that they have from the spatial plan direction to then give effect to it through their own funding and own annual plans and long-term plans, because that may well look slightly yeah. different for each um, authority. So that will be, so if we've got input into strategic direction, have we got that right? And Hui Hui Mai indicates that that is the right direction. And then it's, as you point out, how does that actually mean on the ground in terms of the investments and decisions to be made, which will sit with each um, partner. Right. And, and, and we are sort of looking at those types of uh, questions now um, with the long-term plan and also the Otatahi Christchurch plan as well. So we're, we're looking at getting on the front foot, but we do have to wait for this process to go th Good through answers. its course. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron. <coughs> Aaron? Yep. Yeah, hi. Sorry. Um, my uh, questions are just around the, the MRT, and, um, and it's a bit of a follow-on from Pauline's because of the uh, plan change 14 if that really should only allow uh, building on there uh, along that route and I think from earlier presentations I've seen on rail it's a 400 meter walk is that the what we say people will walk to a train yes rail or is it less I, I think um, uh, what Councillor Cohen is um, uh, referring to as the walkable catchment for the um, public yeah. transport qualifying matter and centres, yeah. et cetera. Yep. Uh, so that's part yeah, of PC14. So, yeah, yeah. And I, um, I'm looking at the, uh, well, looking at the um, 
the numbers for ours. How many kilometres long is our as as our one? Is it twenty two? Twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah. Yeah, and we compared to Sydney, and there's this 24 kilometres, and they have, as Sydney has a population density of 8,000 uh, 8, per square kilometre, we're 280, they get 70,000 trips daily of people on it, and we're estimating 15,000 trips daily. Has someone done this modelling to work out how many people will actually be on that network? Um, so I'll use the Sydney one through you, Mr. Chair. Yep, there, there has been a significant amount of modelling being done that has been peer reviewed by independents. So um, that that all that work has been done, and that all sits within the business case or the appendices, um, and um, that that's all good. Um, in terms of the twenty-two kilometre route, um, that is the. Um, entirety of it and the proposal in the business case is to stage it and stage one is really around the corridor which runs between Church Corner in the southwest through the central city and up to Papua New Northlands in the first instance and then there is further work that needs to be done in places like Hornby in particular um, where there are some constraints that we would need to work through probably through a master planning exercise before um, the MRT system would be extended out there and to Belfast in the north. So while the entire length of the route is 22 kilometres, the first stage of that is significantly less than that. So my only other question would be, and, and thank you for that explanation, Richard, that all makes, I mean, makes perfect sense if we were doing it, is uh, how many other cities in the world, similar western cities, um, have a population density uh, close to ours that have light rail. Right, what are the examples? I'll be quite keen to look at theirs, where it's been successful and stuff. I can't answer that question off the top of my head, but um, I was recently in the, the Gold Coast and they have got a system over there which is not dissimilar to what we're considering here. And I yep. think their population is also not dissimilar. So um, it, it, the benefit for Greater Christchurch as we see it is that we're not in the same situation potentially as other parts of the country or other parts of the world where, where we're trying to retrofit this into an area where there has already been significant growth and intensification. Mm -hmm. The benefit of this is that we can try and get ahead of the game mm -hmm. and plan for the future in a manner that kind of supports your regulatory regime that you're considering through MDRS and other plan changes, but also um, encourages growth and intensification along that route as well via that kind of lead infrastructure that I referred to earlier on. So it's, it's, it is a different situation to other um, parts of New Zealand or other parts of the world, but but we think the time is right to do the planning and to continue to do the planning with a view to implementation, you know, five plus years from now. Right. Yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah, Gold Coast is a similar population, they're 500,000, but their population density is 485, so almost double ours. But where their route is along there, and I've been and caught that one, it's beautiful, it's actually a really nice, a great bit of kit. Is surrounded by up to 30, 40 storey apartment blocks uh, uh, down through, you know, through the main area of Circus Paradise and stuff. Like, there's a lot of people living or staying very close to that line. And even their units aren't full when that goes down the. I mean, it's nice to catch, but it, so that's my questioning is around can we see this remotely stacking up? Look, um, and it's, it's a good question, but, but the work that we've done, um, and, and it is in the uh, report, shows that the preferred way forward could return between $1.1 and $2.8 of benefits for each dollar invested. So the, 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 um, the business case is pretty clear that this has got potential to take through to the next phase and that the benefit cost ratio associated with this project indicates very favourable returns for a project of this scope and size. Okay. 
Thank you. Sure. Thank, thank you, Aaron. Um, Mark, please. Thank you. Um, thank you for the, um, this presentation. I'm, as the local councillor of Hornby, interested in your mention of a master plan. I think that's vital to this process to make sure that we have this well planned and, and well thought out. So thank you for that. Um, also a little nervous around timing um, in regards to MRT. We're talking, I've heard, 10 to 15 years before it gets out to, to the Hornby corner. Um, and I'm nervous that too much intensification might land too early for the um, MRT to catch up and you know meet the demand for transport. So is, is, has there been much thought, thought put into the idea of I don't know, fast tracking the MRT to a point where it might be there before the intensification lands to actually take the population as they land? We got it. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Councillor. And, and look, we, we, we are aware of those issues around around Hornby, and and that's why the business case does recommend um, you know a, a master planning or program business case type exercise to you know take a kind of a holistic look at uh, look at the area and um, recommend a range of interventions. So um, you know I think that that work can start um, if the business case is endorsed and we do get funding to go to the next stage. You know, we, we feel that that work um, around a Hornby master plan can start reasonably soon. Yep. It is subject to funding, though. Um, and I don't know, I don't have a strong sense of how long that might take. But there's nothing to stop us doing that in parallel with the detailed business case. So whilst you're kind of honing in on the route, making sure that that all stacks up and doing your detailed design and other such things, you could also be running in parallel a master planning type exercise alongside of that. So you know, when you hit that delivery date, you are better placed to know what challenges you have in Hornby. Well, we can all probably guess as to what some of those are, but um, and what more importantly, what you're going to do about them. Yep. So that, that's the way we see it playing out. Yep. We're yet to do all of that work in terms of next steps, and um, that that's if the if the indicative business case is endorsed. That's what we'd work out over the second part of this year and, and probably come back and update you as to what the work streams all are. Um, there are recommendations in the business case, but we, we need to flesh those out a bit. Excellent. And I guess to, to add to your, your reply there, um, you'll be pleased to know that one of our community board priorities that was passed just last week was to work on Hornby Master Plan. So right. we're thinking alike. Thank you. Alike. Sarah, thank you. Thanks. Um, just following on from Tyler's point about youth representation, uh, the, the Buffka Fanake Kanga Committee is meeting again um, ahead of the hearings panel sort of meeting and doing its work. So is there opportunity for them to um, actually just get a bit of further advice and actually look at that? Uh, um, so it isn't planned for the Buffka Fanake to meet again, but meet at the end of the year once the hearings panel was coming back with its recommendations had been the plan, um, which is why in this report that issue was canvassed and the recommendation put forward around the composition of the panel. Yeah, so just that, you know, the Tyler's point about it's not just about having input into the panel, but it's having a member that, that can then ask the questions of other submitters. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not quite sure if that particular way of engaging was canvassed. And I know that you've said, you know, a lot to put on a young person, but we look at, you know, the Mayor of Gore's 24, um, that still um, would meet a youth criteria. <laughs> I don't think it was. A direction had been to consider it. It was kind of seriously considered and, and actually spoke to the youth input as well about what, what they felt would be appropriate, Okay. which was around getting a plan to actually pick up on the hui hui my work and go now is the next opportunity to influence decision making because we're aware that that can be quite an intimidating process. So actually trying to say how do we get a groundswell of people then, um, youth, participating in that process and I think um, also assisting the hearings panel, hearings panel chair because they'll be looking at all the background documentation and that youth impact and I would um, anticipate certainly I'd be encouraging them to think about how they run the hearings panel and how they do that process to make that as, um, as engaging for youth as possible so there are different ways you could do that and I think that's back to the question around are we going to give time to question how might we run that differently for youth? So I think there's quite a bit of flex in how to run the hearing. Yeah, and we can make sure that we've talked to our hearings panel representative about, about doing all of that as well. Yeah. 
it may be to put it in a location that may be easier or less intimidating than a chamber. So I think the hearing panel has got scope to say, how could we make this um, engaging? Thanks. Okay, uh, Celeste, did you have your hand up? I think I saw it. She's dropped off screen. She's not there. All right, okay. Uh, Andre, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just following on from Pauline's question, which is around shouldn't we be focusing on a mass rapid transit route um, for other areas? Now, Council is asking for a qualifying matter along this exact route, um, which is around the Rickon and Bush area. So it's 250 properties, which would be a qualifying matter from intensification. And the argument Council is putting forward is that the current two story properties near the bush do not jeopardise the bush, but that three storeys would jeopardise the bush. Um, so we're talking 250 properties on this <coughs> mass rapid transit route. Uh, now this wasn't put forward by government, it was put forward by, by Council. Um, I guess just my question here is, do you have any comment on the consistency with that kind of qualifying matter and what we are talking about here today, which is the viability of a mass rapid transit route it, there's, and its um, viability? Yeah, so there will be some intensification within those 250 houses. Yeah. The qualifying matter limits the height, but not having multi-units on those those properties. Yeah. So you could still have, say, four or five multi uh, multi units on on a particular site. So there, there is potential for some uh, intensification. Um, there's going to be cases like this where qualifying matters restrict intensification for other reasons. Um, there's um, hazard constraints. There's this one's about the record and bush, and there's various other matters as uh, qualifying matters as well. So that will sort of uh, be some inconsistency um, amongst them sometimes. Okay. Great, thank you. But it is a, a relatively small section too of Rickerton Road. Yep. Yep. But is is council also not sort of, you know, trying to restrict intensification, well, across Christchurch in general, with a number of different qualifying matters, including yep. this mass rapid transit system? So. Yeah. Sometimes there will be some competing differences yeah. there, but um, obviously that one will be hotly contested um, during yeah. the uh, independent hearings yeah. panel process. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it'll be thoroughly thrashed out through that process. Cool, thank you. Jake, did you, did you have one? Yeah, I'm actually good now. You're yep. done? Okay, Tyrone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Kia ora. Um, so just looking at the, um, at the sort of the southeast and sort of just specifically, let's talk about Littleton. Um, it's the number one port <laughs> in the South Island. Uh, it's getting increasing volumes of uh, cruise ship passengers and it's been a bit of a shamozzle this summer um, and managing those. Um, so, I mean, ha ha what sort of, you know, the, and the, the port's not going anywhere, the freight's, freight's increasing, I guess, so, you know, those high volume sort of routes um, and you really can't get to Littleton without getting in, into a vehicle. I mean, you can go by bike, but, uh, you know, only Kelly's probably fit enough in this room to be able to do that. Um, but um, so what sort of considerations are sort of given there and, and sort of how do you sort of see that playing out? Um, so ob obviously it's not on the mass rapid um, transit route, um, but uh, there will always be considerations of public transport um, to and from Littleton. It's not a priority area either in terms of the spatial plan. So um, it will just uh, fall into the, the normal sort of considerations for public transport. Just if I could perhaps add that um, MRT is part of a wider kind of business case process and, and the broader business case is, we call it PT Futures Combined Business Case, which is a bit of a mouthful, but that's really about getting our existing public transport system up to a reasonable level of service. And that includes bus priority measures along core routes as well as increasing frequency along those core routes and, and in, in other locations. So that is a work stream we're progressing and we need to make sure that's integrated with MRT. So you should see an uplift in um, <clears throat> the level of service for public transport across Greater Christchurch in the next five or six years as that gets implemented and that would include um, Littleton. Um, Wakotahi as part of its New Zealand upgrade program is upgrading um, Brougham Street. So that will make it, one, more attractive for people to um, 
use is if you're in public transport, but also if you're cycling and walking, as well as providing for a good level of service for freight getting to the port. So uh, we're aware that Littleton is the, the, the key port in the South Island, and um, freight needs to get to and fro there, so we are providing for that. And there's also the numerous upgrades that have been done uh, also as part of NZ Up, but 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 also some of them part funded by Wakotahi to the Kiwi Rail Network as well. So there is a lot of stuff happening um, in and around both freight and connections to Littleton. Um, so I think you'll see an improvement over the years to come, Councillor. Thank you, Rich. That's very clear. And a lot of stuff happening is, is you know, that's a good phrase. Um, so pleasing to hear that. Cheers. And Vic, were you looking to second it because I'm moving it? Yes. Yeah, right, I'm moving it, you're seconding it, and Dawn has a question. It's just uh, in specific to uh, Councillor Harrison Hunt's query in relation to an addition. Um, oh, it's gone. <laughs> and appreciating that uh, we are a partner, City Council, Selwyn, YMAC, ECAN, and the government, uh, the, the request is that request that staff provide advice to the Whakapanaki Kianga Committee on the addition of youth representation on the Greater Christchurch Spatial Plan Hearings Panel. Now, obviously, there's been a to and fro in terms of the discussions and what was being presented as well. So I just want to be um, advised, Tracy, that that doesn't have a knock-on effect with our other neighbouring councils mm -hmm. and that we are able to give that advice in the round to everybody. Um, it's just in terms of how to then impact on the dis on reversing effectively a decision made by Whakafanake last week yeah. in terms of the composition of the panel. So I would need to have a think about that. Yeah. So so that's just what I wanted to check. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, are you happy to retract it and on the understanding that we look at every opportunity to ensure that young people are fully engaged recognising young people came and presented to the committee and talked about different methods. I think, I can't remember Sarah, yeah, thanks, Dawn. there at that point. Yeah, well, in, in light of that, and the decision's already been made, and they're not going to be meeting again. This is sort of, it's turned to be non-eventful, so I'm quite happy to, to retract that, um, but also putting it through um, to Vic to just let her and the Whakawhanake Kind Committee know of the importance of youth representation on this, yes. um, but in, in terms of their voice, Yep, um, so and for future. So. so I recommend that we put a noting provision in the minute so we've got it well noted. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers. So we'll now go into more questions from Pauline. <laughs> We're going to debate. Pauline's got debate. Yeah, look, um, we should never underestimate the importance of planning and other cities that have failed to plan. Um, have failed networks, and I think we can see that, and I'm not pointing the finger or anything, but we need to plan. And in the words of Richard, again, this work is to get us ahead of the game. So we just want to be able to get around easily um, from a couple of destinations into the city. So, um, But I am concerned about um, the resources and the timelines here. It just seems to be, um, once again, the chicken and an egg thing. We know we've got a housing crisis and we're going full bore to build more houses faster everywhere, as was the intention in, in Plan Change 14. Um, yet I worry that the MRT will, will lag behind. So it's about getting the timing right so that housing must be aligned with MRT. And I know that's the intention, <coughs> but I'm not sure uh, we need to focus on getting that to, to actually work. And I'm also concerned about the time lag for the work and methodology for identifying the land development constraints and areas to protect. So I'd really like a focus on that too. It's, it's Once again, it's, it's there, but it's the timing to do it. And by the time we get any teeth in this, it could be too late for some areas. So look, um, once again, this is a, a good plan, but it needs timelines, it needs resourcing. And it needs speed if we're going to get this right. So I will support this today, and that'll be my debate for the next one as well, so we don't need to redo that one. I'll support this. Thank you for all the work on this. It's incredible. What made you think we were going to have debate on the second one? <laughs> you fell into the trap. <laughs> Mark, please. I thought I might lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, again, fully support this. I think the more planning we can do for the... Um, future of our city and the future of our environments, the better. Uh, I, as you would have heard in the questioning, I'm a little nervous around the timing of 
the um, MRT landing in time for the intensification to pick up the, the population that'll land. Um, but I'm happy to have that noted, and I'm, I'm excited to to hear that um, Waka Kotahi and the Greater Christchurch Partnership are looking at the idea of master planning um, in areas such as Hornby. Um, it's very timely, it's overdue, I believe, and it'll be good to, to have that master plan discussion so that we can try and make sure that we do the absolute best we can as the spatial plan and the MRT land into the neighbourhoods. Um, and yeah, let's get on and, and get this, this happening, I think is pretty much where we need to be. Okay, my five bobs worth. Um, I think um, what Richard said is um, to try and retrofit it in like it's being done in Auckland is an absolute jolly nightmare. I've been up there a wee bit lately and it's, uh, it's not a good look. Um, we, we've got luxury of flat. Um, it's the business case that, um, the indicative business case that's been thrown out there is the value of dollars we get back to the dollar spent is light years ahead of the other cities. Uh, as, as per usual, Christchurch is a wee bit behind actually jumping on the bandwagon and saying let's doing it, but it was uh, the work from Richard's team that crystallised it in our eyes and made us um, jump on the bandwagon. So it's a very long journey. I'm fully supportive of this because if we don't start, we'll never get to the end. So that's my five bobs worth and Sarah and then Kelly. Uh, thanks so much. And um, it is hard to talk about um, just one of these and not with the other because it is such a holistic um, approach. And not only is it a, a city shaping approach, but it's a... Um, the physical environment, but it's a city shaping when it comes to us becoming a low carbon 21st century sustainable garden city, um, because that's what we need. We need greater density and we need really, really good public transport of different types that are suitable for the, for the areas that they're going in. So while we've got the MRT business case here, we've also already signed off on the public transport futures and have additional funding to get that work for the areas where the MRT is not going. Um, it is a priority to get this done um, really quickly. It's a really large priority to get Hornby sorted. Um, lots and lots of development that over there um, over many years without a corresponding sort of transport um, holistic plan that actually makes it a place that you can get around easily. I'd go to Hornby and shop um, in a heartbeat if there was a train to get there because the driving out there is so bad. Um, and I think that uh, there will be many other people as well. I'd like to commend the engagement on this, and I know that Council also often gets bagged for, for not doing um, enough early engagement, but engagement on this started pre-COVID. So the Greater Christchurch 2050 work that, um, that staff have done um, over a number of years with a huge number of workshops, stakeholder workshops, all of those really, really good things and broad consultation um, then led into the Hui Hui Mai and now into the spatial plan for formal consultation. So we've had early, early engagement, we've had early engagement and now we're formally consulting and um, this hasn't come out of nowhere for people, which is really, really good. Um, and I think I will leave that for now, apart from just saying that when it comes to um, other cities around the world that are doing this, they've seen the same thing. So Gold Coast City, which Aaron has pointed out rightly, is a really similar size to us, um, had fights over whether they'd put light rail in or not. Um, some people thought it was going to be a nightmare, um, change was scary, all of that kind of stuff. But it has been um, an, a, an overwhelming success well past um, what people had expected, and um, and it will be even easier for us to do because we're putting this in ahead of the density for the most part. So while we'll get some density to start with, we won't um, until uh, it's actually in place. So that's great. Thank you. Kelly. Yeah, thank you. Um, look, I'm really excited to see this. I think it's something that's been a long time coming. I feel like this is a pivotal moment in our city's history. Um, and, and we're seeing a lot of sort of change uh, in terms of housing intensification and, you know, rapid transport. Uh, and I think that this is just going to uh, really launch us into the future. Um, you know, it has been a long time coming. We've been talking about the potential for rail for a long time. Um, yeah, I love the example of the Gold Coast where I've been a number of times and seen how effective that system is. So really excited, really supportive of this. Aaron? 
Yeah, um, so I just want to start by saying that um, I'm a huge fan of rail and have wanted us to uh, look into rail and get rail going again in Christchurch. Um, I think that the heavy rail lines are a, a better use than the on-street stuff just because of all of the other hazards that come with on-street and that was um, sadly showing up in Sydney last week. Uh, the... Um, and, and it happens with heavy rail as well. I mean, it's just transport everywhere. But uh, with light rail and uh, this particular plan and or even heavy rail, we don't have, and everyone keeps saying density, we don't have a population density that can support this in any way, shape or form. So as much as we all want to signal that we'd love to see rail, I, I just beg everyone in the chamber to look at comparative cities around the world and look at what actual population density is and how many people have to live near a line for it to be successful. There is no way, shape or form that this can be successful with our current numbers, even if we double or triple our numbers. Tripling would get us closer to the Gold Coast, so that would, but Christchurch people don't want to live in that dense of population. So we're, we're trying to make something happen that just can't and then uh, one of the other, th another comparative <coughs> city that we compared ourselves to in the past was Portland in Oregon, which had a light rail network, uh, which is quite successful. Their population density is 25 times that of Christchurch. And they're talking about trying to make Portland more dense. Uh, so we have to look at these numbers. And if you went and knocked on the door of every single household in Christchurch and said how many people live there, and it's on average three, and you said, you're going to have an upfront bill for light rail of $30,000 to your household. Are you happy to put that on your mortgage right now? I don't think you'll get many takers, especially from those that live miles away from the line. Uh, the cost of this is horrendous. I know it's mostly government money, but that is still our money. I would rather spend that money on fixing our hospitals, our mental hospitals, and making other things for our society work because taxpayer dollars can only ever go so far. And to spend it on this as much as I would absolutely love it, I've gone and caught those ones in those other cities to see how well they work. I challenge everyone else to do the same. And they're still not that busy in cities that have got 20 times the population density of us. If you, anyone can show me numbers that this will stack up, more than happy to look at them. But so far, we're actually living in La La Land. So vote for it if you will but um, you're just setting ourselves up for economic failure around this. Thank you. Thank, thank, Happy thank, travel. Thank you, Aaron. Um, Andre. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just like to toe talk over my uh, Councillor Peter's thoughts around and concerns around time frame. The best solution to that is that this gets cracking, uh, gets on cracking as soon as possible. Uh, and certainly like to toe talk with Councillor Arison Hunt's thoughts around uh, youth involvement. There are young people in school right now who will be older than four of the councillors definitely are around this table by the time this is Thanks. underway. So uh, the four youngest here, um, yeah, there are young people in school right now that will be older than us when this is built. So to have youth involvement in this process and uh, hearing what young people want this to look like is pretty darn important in my view. So whatever can be done, I think is really important there. Thank you very much. Jake, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, unlike Councillor and I do um, believe the evidence and the evidential business case that actually the benefit-cost ratios really do stack up for this project and they stack up comparatively well compared to other similar infrastructure projects across the country and that the route is right and that heavy rail actually isn't an appropriate treatment for this, um, for this, for this project. Um, look, this is a really exciting piece of work. It's a piece of work that started well before my time on this council and will extend probably well after my time on this council. Or maybe, like Yanni, I will be here when phase one opens. <laughs> but, but it's not fair, he's not in the room. But look, getting visibility of this for the time I am here really is really exciting. And that's because, as has been said before, this is a city shaping project. Um, it'll drive our urban form and is a big part of our ambition to decarbonise our city and to make it efficient to get around. Let's not forget that cities that are easy to get around have uh, reap real economic benefit, as well as obviously the obvious social and environmental benefits. 
Um, I'm also really pleased to see the investigation for potential future uh, rapid, mass, uh, rapid mass transport routes is already in place um, before stage one begins or construction on stage one begins. Um, this is really important because international research shows that creating an infrastructure pipeline drives down contractor prices and provides long-term directions and certainty for our communities. Um, to colleagues who have expressed that the route doesn't yet go, isn't yet that there isn't routes planned for their communities, I would say, look, you've got to start somewhere because you can't start everywhere. Um, so while we're not committing to this yet today, um, this is just a step in what I hope will be a rapid journey. Um, and I think that actually in time, this is something that people will look back at our council and credit, you know, credit this council for in, in the Christchurch of uh, 2080. So it's here. Thank you. Um, Tyler? Uh, tēnā tātou katoa. Uh, I'm really excited um, about, about this plan and I'm looking forward to seeing how it pans out in the next 50 years. Uh, I think there's a lot of promise with this and I think it's going to put us on the map in regards to being one of the most desirable cities uh, in our country, but hopefully in the Southern Hemisphere, that'd be fantastic. I wanted to address this, this youth problem that I've had and Everybody knows that this is something that I'm really passionate about. Just going back to 2019, the average elected member under the age of 40 was knocking on around under 10%. So that is a huge amount of uh, underrepresentation for our young people. And it's up to us to actually talk and be, be talk on behalf of our grandchildren and our children. And when it comes to things like the Greater Christchurch um, Partnership, it's really important that every single one of these institutions looks at our young people and gives our young people a voice. Let me be quite clear in saying that the things that we're doing that as old people, is what they'd call us, is serving us soup and giving us and giving them chopsticks. You know, it's exactly the same as what we're doing here. We're saying, here you go, have fun, enjoy, enjoy your meal. It's ridiculous. So what I want to do, and I want to review a lot of our policies, and I'll be doing this over the next few years, is reviewing our policies and seeing where the holes are in regards to representation. I am looking forward to seeing uh, the Whakawhanake Kainga Committee um, take on into account our young people, taking into account um, those that don't have access um, to certain things. And when we're looking at markets, for example, if we look at Riverside, for example, the strip had a road going through it. It was practically dead. What we did is we chucked in amazing amenities we chucked in all of these things right beside the riverside, and it's actually a phenomenal place for everybody from all walks of life to be able to enjoy. So when we're looking at that, we can build it, and they will come. That's exactly what's going to be happening over the next 50 years, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, kia ora. Thank you. Righty. Hi, Ty. Ryan then, Vic. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. So I've looked at a, um, an example of a city um, similar to Christchurch, um, um, so it's called Auckland in the 1960s, which had a very similar population um, to Christchurch now and a way lower population density. Um, and they had a mayor at the time called Dovemeyer Robinson who had a vision for um, public transport in Auckland and he was poo-pooed. Um, and people balked at the cost of uh, about a quarter of a billion dollars um, back in the late 60s, um, early 70s. Um, it was too expensive. Oh, it's not right. We just don't need it. And that is one of the totemic examples of, of lack of vision of public officials and elected members in this country, if not the world. It is, and we will not fall into the same trap because we've thought about this and we've um, and we're getting ahead of the curve, as Richard said. So I absolutely support what we're doing. And you know, kia ora. Victoria. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm also really excited about this uh, getting underway. And like Councillor Barber, I think that it is a pivotal time, and it shows that we really are maturing as a city. Um, unlike Councillor Harrison Hunt, I'm not sure if I'll be here in 50 years' time. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, look, I, I note what Councillor. Kewan has said in relation to viability and density, and uh, thank you, um, Tyrone, for raising that in relation to Auckland. I think it is relevant. And also thank you to you, Richard, for the way in which you've responded to that, and particularly when we look at the benefit for the cost ratio. I think that's really, uh, really valid. Uh, and also, as you said, we have to remind ourselves that this is the city shaping exercise, and we are really, we have an opportunity here to get ahead of the game. So the time is now to do that. 
there's lots of variables at play. There's lots of multiple work streams that are all overlapping in their programs. Uh, no doubt we have to get a really efficient uh, working uh, effective public transport network and this is the part of this so this is now is the time to get on and do this um, thank you Councillor Harrison Hunt for raising the issue in relation to youth um, as the representative on the hearings panel I hear that um, I have confidence in the process and the other members on that panel to make sure that we're going to do that and I commend um, the hard work that's already been done in relation to the engagement uh, around this issue and thank you to all that have been involved that are bringing this to um, to our table and let's get on with it. Thank you. So with that, I will put the motion. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? No. Okay. Now, I've got to shoot out for 15 minutes, but I'll push my okay. luck. With, you, you know, I'm going to push my luck and do the other one while we're here. Um, I'm happy to move it, and um, Mark's happy to second it. Any questions? Because we've had them all. Any debate? because we've had it all. Right. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Thank you. Carried. Aaron? Yeah. Mine was only, yeah, mine was only the vote against the um, mass rapid transport. Aye. Sorry. Aye. Roger that. Thank you, mate. Now, do, shall we have oh, sorry, 10 yeah, minutes for... against the special plan. More, yeah, we'll have 10 minutes for a cup of tea. No, I'll spend about half a